Hey everyone, in this video, let's learn how to effectively handle errors in a React application using the React Error Boundary package. To get us started, I've set up a very simple application. In the components folder, we have two components, person.js and click counter.js. The person component accepts a person prop and we render the person's first name and last name in uppercase. The click counter, as the name indicates, tracks the number of times the button is clicked. Both these components are included in app.js. The person prop is also passed in with Bruce Wayne as first and last name. If we run this application, we see hello Bruce Wayne and the click counter working as expected. And we know that everything doesn't go as planned when writing applications. Let's assume that we are fetching a person data from an API and passing it into the person component. Only this time, we didn't account for the person data object to be empty. So back in VS Code, Let's make a copy of this person component, but this time pass in an empty object as the person prop. And this is a pretty common scenario where we as the developers tend to write code with only the positive scenarios in mind. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, we see an error and our app is broken. And this, of course, is for development. If you were to run the application in production, you would see a white screen with absolutely nothing. So if I dismiss the error, this is what you would see in production. And you might agree that a white screen isn't the best feedback to the user of our broken application state. What would be nice is if we could capture the error and render a fallback UI. The React team made that possible in version 16 with the introduction of error boundaries. Now I am going to quickly implement an error boundary for the app we have, but if you want a detailed explanation, I'm going to leave a link to my video on error boundaries from the React tutorial series. Make sure to check that out. All right, in the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called errorboundary.js. Within the file, we define our error boundary. So at the top, import component from React. Now an error boundary has to be a class component and hence the import. Now for our component code, export class error boundary extends component and within the class we specify a constructor this accepts props we call super passing in props and we declare a state variable so this dot state and the property is has error and initially it is set to false now for this component to be an error boundary, we need to implement either get derived state from error lifecycle method or component did catch lifecycle method. Let's implement both. So static get derived state from error receives error as an argument and within the function body, we return state where has error is now true. So this basically indicates there is an error in our application. We can also define component did catch, which receives error and error info as its arguments. And in this lifecycle method, you basically send your error information to a logging service. For now, I'm going to simply log it to the console. So logging the error, passing in the arguments received. Finally, in the render function, we're going to check if there is an error. So this dot state dot has error. We're going to return an h1 tag that says something went wrong. 
If not, we're going to simply return the children props. Return this dot props dot children. This is our error boundary. Now, if there is something that you couldn't quite understand, again, please refer to the video from my React tutorial series. And this, of course, should be render. All right, now that we have the error boundary, back in app.js, we can now wrap our components with the error boundary. Make sure to import it at the top. If you now go back to the browser, refresh, and close the overlay, you can see that the user would get to know that something went wrong. Now the UI could be a well thought out feedback screen from where the user can go back to the home page, but this h1 tag serves the purpose for now. So this is great. We are now able to render a fallback screen when there is an error when rendering a component in our application. All thanks to the error boundary component. Let's go back to VS Code and induce an error in our click counter. Now for our example, in our click counter component, let's throw an error if the count exceeds five. So I'm going to define const max count allowed. And this is going to be equal to five. Now within the handle click function, I'm going to add a try catch statement. So try if count is equal to max count allowed through new error count limit exceeded. Else we're going to increment the count value. For our try, we also need to add a catch block. Receives an error, which for now, we're going to simply log to the console. If I now comment out the person component with an empty object and head back to the browser, we have our click counter again. And if I now increment the count to six, you can see that the count value doesn't increment and in our console, we see the error logged. Click counter error, count limit exceeded. However, we don't have the fallback UI anymore. And this is a known limitation of the error boundary implementation. If you take a look at the React docs, it clearly states that error boundaries do not catch errors for event handlers and asynchronous code. Now that is a problem since a React application we build typically tends to have several event handlers and asynchronous code snippets. The React team also mentioned that error boundaries would remain the same and there would be no extended support for the limitations mentioned here. Now, if that is the case, how do we effectively handle these types of errors in our application? The answer is the React error boundary package. This package provides a wrapper component similar to our own error boundary component, but it simplifies the process and allows us to handle errors thrown from event handlers and async events. Let's understand how. In VS Code, we begin by installing the package. So in the terminal, yarn add react hyphen error hyphen boundary. And once the installation completes, we import the error boundary component. So instead of importing error boundary from our own component, we import it from the library, react error boundary. The component still wraps the other components in our application, but this time the component will accept two props. The first one is the fallback component prop. This accepts a component that should be rendered when there is an error in our component tree. So let me create a new file for our fallback component, fallback.js. And within the component, let's define a new component with some text. Something went wrong 
and I'll add the exclamation mark to make sure this is the component we are seeing in the browser. Let's go back to app component and assign fallback.js. Make sure to import it at the top. Now, apart from this fallback component, we also get to specify on error prop and assign a handler. Let's call it error handler and define this function. Const error handler. This function automatically receives the error and error info as its arguments, which we can log to the console. Logging error and error info. Ideally, you can call your logging service here, but for now, logging to the console will suffice. All right, that pretty much is our error boundary setup. Let's now pass in an empty person object and head back to the browser. So uncomment the person component. And if I head back to the browser, you can see that our application is broken. And if I close the overlay, we now see something went wrong with the exclamation mark. Our fallback component is being rendered and the error is logged to the console from our error handler in app.js. However, if we comment out the person component again, refresh the browser and increment the count to six, the error thrown from our click handler will still not be captured by our new error boundary. And to render the same fallback component in click counter, we need to call the error handler function from the react error boundary package. So import use error handler from react error boundary. And within the component, we invoke the hook use error handler, which returns a handle error function. Now in the catch block, we can make use of this function. So instead of console log, handle error, passing in the error. If we now go back to the browser, refresh, and increment the count to six, we do see the overlay in development, and in production, we see the same fallback UI being rendered in the browser. We have gracefully handled errors in our application. Now let me take a minute to compare a regular error boundary with the React error boundary package to help you understand what this package brings to the table. The first point to note here is that our custom error boundary is a class component. With React version 16.8, React is primarily function components and hooks. So for someone new to React, the idea of a class component, the lifecycle hooks, and this keyword can be a bit of a learning curve. The error boundary package, on the other hand, abstracts away this complexity. You don't have to maintain your own state, update it in the lifecycle method, and conditionally render the UI. The package does it all with a simple fallback component prop. The component did catch lifecycle method is also replaced by the on error prop, which gives us access to the same error and error info arguments. But the biggest selling point, of course, is the ability to handle errors from event handlers and asynchronous code using the same logic we already have in place to handle rendering errors. At the moment, we are handling the error from a click event handler, but the same code can be applied when you're fetching data from an API, and perhaps there is an error when loading the data. Now, the React Error Boundary package has a lot more props that let you address even more scenarios, but I will leave that for you to explore. If you're not using this package at work, I highly recommend you showcase what this library is capable of and your teammates will be more than happy to incorporate it into your next project. All right then, thank you guys for watching. And if you found the video helpful, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video.